You've likely already picked up a lot of gear in Hogwarts Legacy, put on the best possible item for your current level and moved on. Well, I want to tell you that there's way more to this equipment system than you might think right now. It namely opens up a bit more later on and can give you massive boost to damage if you use it right. So I want to share everything you need to know, some tricks on how to get the best possible items, including a nice one for the shop in Hogsmeade and way, way more. Of course, if you enjoy Hogwarts Legacy and the content here on the channel, then it would be amazing if you could Leave a like on the video, subscribe for way more spoiler free tips and tricks like this and let's go. The gear system seems not that interesting on the surface. It's like this for a big part of your journey. You have 6 slots with items that all have 2 stats. The face wear, hat and outfit all have defense on them while the scarf, gloves and cloak have offense on the item. This is always the case and the rarity of the item, so green, blue, purple or legendary and the level of the item determines the power of the stat on the gear piece. But there is a range which you can very easily see in the gear vendor in Hogsmeade. Here we for example got these level 35 gloves with 96 offense while there are also these other legendary level 35 gloves with 99 offense. So of course always pick the item with the higher stats for your current level as you can switch their luck in the transmog system anyways. Like really do this I would argue immediately because I'm surprised by how much an increase in offense actually impacts your damage. Like here for science I removed my cloak and do 21 with the basic shot and a 43 with a crit against this goblin assassin on level 34. If I then equip my cloak again my offensive stat increases by 91 and my damage is almost doubled. Regular hits go from 21 to 37 and my crits from 43 to 74. Which is kind of crazy and you even notice differences when going to this green cape which decreases my offense by 23 then my basic hit is 30 instead of 37 so take the time to immediately equip more powerful gear when you find it as the increases are really noticeable but this also means that upgrading your gear increases your power even more as this unlocks the second stats on your item and in order to do this we need to go to the room of requirement which of course unlock by just following the main story the loom will be there after you unlock your first vivarium more on that in a moment and this lets you spend material to improve your equipment. And it's very easy, the items that have defense as their first stat have offense as their second stat and the items with offense as their first stat give defense as their second stat. There are three upgrades in total and the higher the rarity the higher the second stat will be per upgrade while green cannot be upgraded at all. So for blue items the first upgrade increases the second stat to two then to 6 and finally to 12. The first upgrade for purple goes from 0 to 4, then to 12, then to 24, and a legendary goes from 0 to 6 to 18 and to 36. So there's a 12 point difference between the rarities on the maximum upgrade level, making it of course smarter to focus on legendary upgrades, although this will cost you more resources. Like upgrading blue gear is super cheap, purple gear is also pretty easy, like if we compare the requirements for a level 3 purple face wear upgrade with a legendary level 3 face wear upgrade, you see that you also need a grab horn horn and hippogriff feathers to complete the upgrades, which are creepy features you get later on in the game by following the main story. Also worth noting is that upgrading gear items with the vents as a second stat require different materials. Instead of jabbernal feathers you need mooncalf fur and the other upgrades also require different creatures. So it's overall smart to take care of a lot of these beasts to improve your gear and combat power. If you return to the room of requirements after having your first beast class you'll be able to open your first vivarium and house elf deke will also teach you about rest rescuing beast. Now for this mission you will already need to capture jobber knoll and moon calves, like try and capture multiple of them as they are key for gear upgrades. You can of course also find them later on by looking for the special beast then on the map. Like to only do that you can have 12 beasts of 4 species in each vivarium and they can give you a lot of these upgrade materials every 25 minutes if you return to the room and take care of them. You by the way don't have to like follow them around, you can also just pull up the menu and then select the items that you want to collect. I did this as soon as possible and now I don't have to worry about gear upgrades anymore. Totally follow Deke's questline as well as this will explain the breeding mechanic so you can make creatures of your own based on the ones you've already captured. It unlocks three extra vivariums so you can have way more beasts to generate more upgrade resources and it also gives you access to a special creature that you need for the level 3 legend 
legendary defense upgrade. So totally help your house elf out. Other creatures that are handy are the toads that you find near the water. So totally get a few of these. Nivellers are also handy as well. And you can actually get a free one from doing the A Thief in the Night side quest over here on the map. But there are also a couple of dens like the one over here on the map. I always use Levioso so then the creatures have no time to run and I can easily capture them. And I will by the way leave a link to a dynamic Hogwarts Legacy map by Map Genie in the video description where you can see all the icons on the map. I just remove them all, then type what I'm looking for, like in this case the Niffler Dance, and then they will just show up and I can easily go there in the game. So yeah, it's totally smart to have a good variety of creatures, especially the ones that are needed for these upgrades. So next to improving the stats on your gear, there are also traits that can really enhance your power. At one point in the game, they will drop on gear items as well, but you can also apply them yourself at the loom, which is nicer because they can also pick better traits and focus on the enhancements you want. First, how do you get these traits? Well, they're hidden in chests in bandit camps in the open world. Map Genie says that there are 42 of these bandit camps in the game. This number could of course not be up to date, but it's worth noting that there are 50 traits that you should be able to earn from exploration. So maybe just like with the talents, you cannot unlock all of them on one character. Now, it's not really an issue though, because the safe tactic that you can do, just like before opening a legendary chest works here as well because these drops are completely random so if you clear a bandit camp then save the game and stand before the chest then open the chest but did not like what you got then just reload that main save you just made and open the chest again and rinse and repeat until you got the trade you like like you in particular want to keep an eye out for these rank 3 traits because these are basically better versions of the lower rank ones so the lower rank ones are basically useless the moment you got a rank 3 traits. The thing is though that you can only put these rank 3 traits on legendary gear. You can also put a rank 2 and rank 1 trait on this but why would you? Purple gear can only have a rank 1 and rank 2 trait and blue can only have a rank 1 trait. So next to the higher stats a legendary gear is also way better because of the higher rank traits it can hold. And yes it's noticeable you can for example increase the damage of certain spells. My Davindo did 644 damage against this river troll but when I put the lesser rank 3 trades on my legendary hat it went to 741 so an increase of 100 damage same for incendio first i did 716 against that same poor river troll but after putting the trades on a gear item i did 823 and you only need one nisal fur to put rank 3 trades on legendary gear so smart to get these cats as well i've been taking care of them for a while and now got enough fur for the foreseeable future so yes in short you want to get legendary gear an amazing source for legendary gear are the chests that i mentioned before i showed you many locations in a previous video where i also touched on that safe tactic i will leave a link to that one in the video description but another way is of course through the shop in hogsmeade it's quite expensive at 500 gold per piece but you can select the highest stats here and also pick up items that you don't have yet to unlock their luck in the transmog system and well i could reach out by west warlock just like you can on my twitter or you can of course leave comments on their videos who shared a trick for this shop if you pass a time six times the clothing shop in hogsmeade resets its stock of clothes and well i tried this myself and it's true i actually had to use the wait function five times you can of course access this in the map menu and then just keep doing this and eventually check the store after five times of using this feature and you see completely new items for sale subscribe of course for way more hogwarts legacy tips and tricks if you haven't already got a ton of great stuff coming your way and already up on the channel want to go more in depth on the trades for example so don't leave a like as well if you want to see more hogwarts legacy videos you can check out my previous video by clicking on the screen with big mistakes i made so you don't have to make them yourself for now i will speak to you soon goodbye